Hello everybody and how are you doing? Welcome to a new tutorial series that I'm trying to get underway. Um, SDL, the Simple Direct Media Layer, at least I think that's the acronym, I sure as hell hope it is, or else I'm going to make a fool of myself right at the beginning of the video. But yes, this is the, the point of this new tutorial series. We're going to be working in C++. I've been trying to get some videos out on that language, moving away from Python, moving away from Batch, and all these other things. But I want to buckle down and focus on C++, the hardcore, strong language, and see what cool stuff we can do with it. So, the best way to approach this is to look at SDL. So, I have my terminal open right here. You can see uh, the active window. Uh, I'm in my C work directory, and that's where I've been typically for um, doing the C++ stuff. And I'm going to make a new directory and call it SDL. Now, when I get in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check out um, how we can install SDL. And I'm running Linux right now, but um, if you need to know more information about SDL or that sort of thing, you can go online. Now, uh, when you go online, the URL for um, the SDL library is www.libsdl.org. You can't see my URL bar, sorry, URL bar, or my address bar in this case, but that's exactly what I have typed in. And this is the home page at the moment. The site may have changed by the time you're viewing this video, I don't honestly know. But yes, SDL, the Simple Direct Media Layer, is a cross-platform development library designed to provide low-level access to audio, keyboard, mouse, joystick, and graphics hardware via OpenGL and Direct3D. It's used by video playback software, emulators, and popular games, including Valve's award-winning catalog and many Humble Bundle games. You can see on the side here it kind of advertises some of the games that have been made with SDL. You can refresh this over and over and over again to see some really cool stuff. Uh, Dynamite Jack, FTL, Faster Than Light, Ooh, Tiny and Big, I know I saw Amnesia and the Dark Descent on here uh, at some point. There are plenty of really awesome things that are made with SDL. It's a super cool library. So uh, let's go ahead and keep looking on here. You'll notice uh, down over on the left there are these download links, and uh, you'll notice there are two versions of SDL, SDL 2.0 and SDL 1.2. Now, years ago, when I was first playing and tinkering and, and learning all about SDL, I'd been using 1.2, so that's kind of where my background actually lies. I'm going to go ahead and take a few risks in this series. I am going to venture into 2.0 without having played with it yet, but I'm sure reading through the documentation and learning as we go along, we can uh, actually get something really, really cool here with SDL 2.0. So that is what I'm going to use. You'll actually notice at the top, this is the new, current, and stable version of SDL, SDL version 2.2, 2.0.2, sorry. And uh, that's what we're going to be using. If we go over to that download link, it'll send us to the same place this banner sent us to, and this is where we can download it. You can find the source code, you can find uh, Windows binaries, you can use it for Linux and that sort of thing. Now for Linux, you're going to have to contact your distribution maintainer for updates and, and that sort of thing, and you have to do the same for the development libraries, which is what we want. So. Uh, I kind of know, in Ubuntu anyway, my package manager is um, aptitude, or apt-get. Now, the way that we work with apt-get is we use sudo, we have to be root, and uh, to search for libraries, you actually have to use apt-cache, or apt-cache, uh, I think. And then we search, and I'm going to search for libsdl, for the SDL library. You can see there's a bunch of stuff that shows up, and I'm actually going to pipe this into less so I can look through it. There is the development library for version 1.2, Simple Direct Media Layer Development Files, SDL. And there's another one way down here, I believe, if we keep scrolling down. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. LibSDL2-dev, Simple Direct Media Development Layers for version 2.0.2 and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. sudo apt get install libsdl 2 Dash dev. I'm going to hit yes, I do want to install all this junk, it's going to go ahead and install that, and cool. Once it's done, we should be able to write some code. Now, okay, this looks like it's just about done here. I want my prompt to hurry up and get here. I'll just, I'll just let this go. Let's go back to the website and let's go over into documentation. Let's look at the wiki. And, okay, now it's explaining what Simple Direct Media Layer, what it is, SDL. This is everything that we just kind of read. Over on the left-hand side, that's where we want to be checking out. Let's go check out the API by category. And um, 
you can, of course, look at the introduction. That kind of shows you more stuff. Um, what can LCL do? I'm migrating from version 1.2 to um, 2.0. It shows you where it, um, what it runs on, that sort of thing. But let's start over. It can also show you some tutorials on getting started and that sort of thing. But I'm going to start, anyway, over in API by category. And let's look at the basics, initialization and shutdown. We want to know how to actually do this sort of thing. Okay, good. It looks like it's done installing. So now let's see. Uh, to begin using SDL in your program, you must call SDL init before anything else. The role of SDL init is to properly initialize the SDL library and start each of the various subsystems required as part of the call. Typically, you can be using SDL initialize video. You want to use a pipe if you want to use multiple. SDL init audio. Those are the defaults. Um, I think there's also another one, SDL initialize everything, which is what we'll typically use. And you can see by clicking on any of these what more you can do. I wonder if they still use version, um, I wonder if they still use everything. Yeah, they do. Okay, I didn't know if they still did for, um, version 2.0. And you need to shut down, once you're done running the program, with SDL quit. SDL quit should be called before an SDL application exits to safely shut down all subsystems, including the default ones. So we typically always have to include that. Let's hop over to my text editor. I'm using Sublime Text, and we know we have to include... Actually, I'll save a new file as this. Let's go into CWork. CWork, SDL. I'll call mine 001. Initialize. Initialization. Dot CPP. Okay, now that we have the file saved, we actually include SDL by using two um, quotation marks here, and then I've been typing in, sorry, acronym SDL and dot H to include the header file. Okay. Now I am going to use the namespace standard, even though we're not really going to be using it in this video. Uh, I am going to include arguments, just for good practice. We can do that with um, int argc and the character array for argv, for argument values. We get our code block ready. I'm just going to return zero for good practice. And like the documentation said, we use sdl underscore initialize to initialize the program and uh, sdl the library. Now, when you're working with sdl, you're typically going to be running functions that have this kind of naming conventions. They have the acronym SDL, followed by an underscore, and then camel case with the rest of the name of the function. You could have SDL underscore, like, set video mode, and you'll notice that these words are all separated by the capital letter of the other word. Okay. Now, for SDL initialize, we want to pass in SDL initialize everything. This is a flag, or kind of a constant that we'll be using, so that's why everything is capitalized. And again, you saw that in the documentation. So uh, that works just fine for us. Now let's go down to SDL underscore quit, and that just kind of safely ends the program for us, just like it said in the documentation. Okay, let's hop on over to our terminal and go ahead and compile this. G++, file name 00 initialization.cpp. And the way that you kind of link or load the SDL libraries kind of simply in, in Ubuntu, or any other Linux distribution, is you use your backticks in bash, so you include the output of another command, and the command that we're going to use is package config pkg uh, dash config. If that's not installed on your system, you can go ahead and install it. I believe that should be pretty simple. Pseudo apt-get install, just like beforehand. Uh, package config, and we want dash dash c flags for uh, the compiler flags, and a dash dash libs for the uh, libraries. And then the name of this library, or package in this case, is SDL2. Now when we run this, we get it compiled. It works just fine for us. If we run a.out, nothing happens. Well, that's pretty okay, because we didn't tell our program to do anything. The code literally initializes SDL, and then it quits. It's not doing anything. <laughs> So, in the next video, we're actually going to have this do something. Let's have it display a window or display something on the screen. Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, this has a lot of potential for us, and we're going to be doing some really cool stuff with SDL very, very soon.